That right there is the MTB Cribs house pet. I think his name is Gary. I think Parrot called him Larry in his video, but if I remember right, John tweeted something about Gary. So I'm gonna go with Gary. So that's Gary. Gary lives in a swimming pool. And I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, you know, that's not right. That's that's not its natural habitat. We've been feeding Gary. Gary's been eating. We have rocks. We have brush. We have lily pads. We have shade. We have everything. We have an aerator. We have everything that Gary needs. Anyways, if you guys want to see that, uh, John John made a video about that. I am alone today. Uh, everybody left. Peric went to Canada. John went somewhere with his girlfriend. Not really sure. Uh, my girlfriend was actually here for this past week. Um, so I'm not leaving, uh, you know, anytime real, real soon. I think in a few days we're going to Florida or something like that. But so I'm in the MTB crib. I'm going to do a, kind of like a how-to video today. This is a video that I, I, I kind of dread just a little bit. And the reason why I dread it is because it's so hard to come up with, to just narrow it down to five baits. For the summer months, there's, there's so many things you can do. And it's very difficult for me to narrow it down. But I'm going to do my best today for you guys. I'm going to film the video outside though. Uh, actually on the old Pink Panther Hello Kitty boat uh, just because I can't go fishing today and uh, this will be you know the closest thing that I can get to uh, to you know being on the water and teaching you guys is sitting on the boat on the driveway so here are my top five favorite baits to throw in the summer all right let's uh, let's get into this video though so I was talking a little bit about why I hate this video and it's not that I hate it but it's so difficult to come up with five baits because I think actually I did this video like two years ago. I did it last year and then I did it two years ago. And when I did it two years ago, I think I actually did like 10 baits and which I should do because there's really like a million baits you could throw in the summer and catch fish. But at that point, it's like, what's the point of doing that? It's like, okay guys, welcome back to episode of Fishing with Flair. Here's the 10 baits you should use in the summer. It's basically like saying, you know, throw everything in your freaking tackle box. It just doesn't make any sense. So I've narrowed it down to my top five favorite baits that doesn't mean that they're necessarily the best summer baits but for me in my style of fishing and the area of the country that I fish they are they're all the best in my opinion so I'm gonna start off with my all-time favorite you guys know the old topwater frog now this is a popping frog probably day in day out a popping frog like this is definitely my favorite but a normal frog works just fine as well something that's just natural colored uh, I as well throw some blacks every once in a while, maybe a little bit of white, but not too often if there's a lot of shad or something. But a frog is something that I that I always have tied on, pretty much year round. You know, from spring to fall, a frog is always something I have tied on. But in the summer, it shines just tremendously. Every every time I go fishing, I'm always throwing a frog. Anytime there's vegetation, anytime there's just any type of cover for the fish to hide it, whether that's docks, laydowns, uh, lily pads, or grass clumps or hydrilla, whatever you want to call it, a topwater frog is a very, 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 very good choice. Uh, I would highly recommend it for all of you guys. So this is for pond fishermen, for lake fishermen, for river fishermen, everything. So some of the baits I'm going, going to go over today may not pertain to you pond fishermen or may not pertain to you big giant reservoir fishermen, but a frog, hands down, will catch fish no matter what body of water that you're fishing. That is bait number one. That is that is what I throw, and I'll give a few more tips along the way here. You throw a frog on low light conditions, so that's either it's cloudy, or that's early in the morning, or late in the evening, sunset, sunrise, or if it's cloudy. Yes, you can catch them when it's sunny, but it's probably not ideal conditions. Now, another bait that I like to throw, this little guy right here. So I, I throw a frog whenever there's cover, like, like I said, lay downs, vegetation, when there's not cover, so if it's just rocks or more open, sparse vegetation, I throw a popper. Now you're probably thinking, now oh, Flair, what about a buzz bait or what about a spook? You're right, those work just great in the summer. But for some reason, in the summer, a popper excels for me. I could throw a buzz bait in the spring and the fall and a spook in the spring and the fall and do pretty well. And I can catch fish on a popper during those times, but for some reason, a popper is just my go-to lure uh, for, for topwater choice. It's a great lure for ponds, it's a great lure for lakes. You could pretty much go anywhere in the country and throw this little little mabobber right there. You want something with rattles, maybe that's got a little feather tail if possible, and I usually stick to just shad patterns, just whites and bone colors. 
keeping it pretty simple. Uh, rocks is my my main thing when I'm throwing a popper is around rocks. So you guys can see uh, in a lot of my videos, I'll, I'll wake up super early in the morning, I'll drive out there, and I'll start throwing a buzzbait or a spook or, again, like I said, a popper against rocks because what, what I notice is in the mornings or in the evenings, it seems like the bait fish kind of push up shallow and the bass follow right behind them. And it's just a good place for, it's a good ambush spot for bass to, to target little shad is up against rocks, up against brush, stuff like that. So a popper, great choice, absolutely great choice in the summer. Now I don't want to make this video too long, but if you guys want to know my favorite rod and reel setups to throw alongside with these baits, I will link everything down below. I'll fill this description just full of all sorts of information that you guys should definitely go check out. I don't want to go over it in the video because the video will be 37 minutes long. I don't want that. I want to keep it short, keep it simple, but it's all down below. Now the next bait is a bait that works pretty well on ponds, uh, but very well on lakes, and that is a ribbon tail worm. Preferably, I prefer a 10 inch one, something that's pretty long. I've thrown some 12 inch ones, I've thrown 7 inch ones, stuff like this. As far as colors go, uh, I throw this kind of like purplish June bug anytime the water's dirty, which I fish a lot of dirty water, uh, or just green pumpkin or some watermelon, but for some reason, this is pretty much the only time of the year that I throw something like this, which is why I put it in my top five list of baits that I enjoy is, for some reason, this just catches big bass in the summer. It's just one of those baits. I throw it around wood. If you could find, if you got a lake or a pond that's just got a lot of brush, a lot of standing timber, standing timber is where I throw this thing. Yes, you can throw it in some grass or on some rocks or even a little bit deeper and you could probably catch some fish. But for me, day in and day out, anytime I'm flipping timber, it's going to be a 10-inch worm. And I just want to Texas rig it, you know, put a tungsten weight on there, put a, you know, probably, I don't know, four or five round bend hook on there. It's important that you use tungsten, though. Uh, I know a lot of you guys watching probably thinking tungsten is so expensive and you don't want to pay for it. I found a cheap place to buy tungsten. I will link it down below. It's where I get all my tungsten now. It's just, it's very, very cheap. And I know tungsten is expensive. But trust me guys, you'll catch more fish. It's so much more sensitive. It's just, it's, it's definitely worth it. If you can afford tungsten, go for it. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below if you guys wanna check it out. But just a Texas rigged worm like this works very well, standing timber, flipping and pitching, uh, all that fun stuff in the summer. Now this is where it gets kinda tricky. I've got three baits here that are fairly different, but at the same time, kinda the same. Uh, and I'm gonna put this in the category of crankbait. So, Let's see if I can do this without hooking myself. I have three different crankbaits here. I've got a, a deep diver, a medium diver, and a shallow diver here. Now the reason why I just say crankbait instead of just deep diver is because I know a lot of you guys watching fish ponds, fish shallow lakes and small little reservoirs, and, and maybe this, something like this is just pretty intimidating or you guys just don't know what to do with it. That's when you would throw a little crankbait like this. Here's a quick tip for you guys though. In the summertime, if you want to fish shallow, if you want to, ow, if you want to fish shallow, and uh, you, you aren't comfortable fishing deep, get up in the morning like me or just go out in the evening. Low light, you can throw a little crankbait like this in low light and catch them. Yes, you could probably catch them during the day, I get that, but what I'm saying is a general pattern for bass is in the morning they go shallow and feed and in the middle of the day they go deep and kind of sit there and sometimes if it's a big enough leg they will school and uh, feed out deep but generally they just kind of go out deep and chill out and then in the evening they go back shallow and feed. So you can throw a little bit of a crankbait like that but if you are comfortable, maybe you have a boat, uh, you want to try something a little bit different, go with like a medium to deep diver. It just depends on how deep you're fishing but a crankbait is a very, very, very good bait in the summer. You guys have seen me so far crush it on deep crankbaits. There's a lake back home in Nebraska that I go out and there's rock piles and all sorts of fun stuff and I throw deep diving crankbaits and it, it just catches a ton of fish. I don't know what it is, it's just a reaction bite. Um, there's a lot of different things you can throw deep. You can throw Carolina rigs, you can throw jigs, you can throw Texas rigs, you can throw crankbaits, you can throw everything. But for me, a crankbait is my favorite and that's why I put it in my top five because it's a search bait. It's a bait that you can throw out there and search and just cover a lot of water. You can catch a lot of fish along the way. So for my fourth lure, just general, a crankbait. If the pond you're fishing is not deep, then go with maybe a square bill. Maybe if it's as vegetation, then just scratch the whole idea of a crankbait and go with like a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. But if you guys can get out deep and you can find some rock piles, some brush piles without getting too hung up, throw a deep diving crankbait. Now lastly, 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 this is my go-to for when I can't catch fish on any of the baits I just listed. And this is what I do in the summers. I go out and I try to look for like anywhere from like eight to maybe 15 feet of water where I think there's some rocks. So some rock piles, maybe a rock point, something like a drop off. And I throw this guy. It is a straight tail worm, six or seven inches, 
on just a stand up shaky head and it just stands up like this and it's super finesse. Now, if you're like Perrick, you're probably gonna say drop shot and that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. You can catch them on a drop shot all day long in the summer, especially for smallmouth. But for me, personally, I enjoy fishing this guy right here. This is just, just a, your normal shaky head bait and I know every top five bait video you guys have probably watched of mine says shaky head. That's because it catches fish. Whether that's a Ned Rig, like a small Ned Rig, a big Ned Rig, or a, or you know, straight tail like this. And I've even thrown like a nine and 10 inch straight tail worm like this. Just any type of subtle presentation is, is always good in the summertime. Sometimes the bass get sluggish and lethargic. If you guys don't know what that means, you can Google it, but it basically just means sluggish and they don't want to eat and they're just not active. Something like that usually does pretty well for me. Like I said, I, I try to go a little bit deeper with that. Just thinking about if the fish move up shallow and feed in the morning and then they go back off deep in the afternoon, that's where I go. I target wherever I think those bass are gonna be transitioning to, to go into the deeper water to hang out for the day and then go back in the evening and feed. So those are my top five all time favorite summertime baits. This is for Texas, Nebraska, pretty much anywhere. And I, and I get it, a lot of you guys may be in Florida or California and thinking, what the heck, where was the giant swim baits? Where were the Carolina rigs? Where were the jigs? I know, those are definitely some, some good possibilities for some baits to catch fish. But for me personally, if I were to only take five fishing poles to the lake, those are the baits that I would have tied on. Well, folks, I had to come back inside. It was freaking so hot outside. I was like dying out there. But I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I did my best to kind of go over my top five favorite baits, but also touch on some other subjects that maybe will help you guys catch fish in the near future. Like I said, I'm gonna leave a lot of information down below. So if you guys have any questions, check the description. If I did not answer them, then leave a comment uh, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Also leave a like if you guys enjoyed the tip videos, I will be back to fishing. The next video you guys will see should be fishing. Um, I don't know exactly when I'm gonna post this video, but I'm going fishing with Lunker CV tomorrow morning and uh, I think I'll be in Texas for a couple more days. So hopefully gonna be doing some, some cool fishing vlogs for all y'all, but Today was a tip video, was a teaching video, was a, for those of you guys that enjoyed the OG Fishing With Flair videos, this one is for you. I'm not gonna make this video any longer though. I'm sure it's plenty long. Thank you guys so much for watching and peace. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no love and that's fine.